Shemaya Vadaya Cha Suradvisham Apare Vasudevasya Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachito Vyagat Devakyam Yachito Vyagat Ajastvam Ashashemaya Ajastvam Ashashemaya Vadaya Chasara Dvisham Vadaya Chasara Dvisham Vasude Apare Vasudevasya Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachito Vyaga Devakyam Yachito Vyaga Adjastvam Adjastvam Ashya Shemaya Adjastvam Ashya Shemaya Vadaya Chasara Apare Vasudevasya Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachito Vyaga Devakyam Yachito Vyaga Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Vadaya Chasura Dvesham Vadaya Chasura Dvesham Chant Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachido Abhayaka Devakyam Yachido Abhayaka Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Vadaya Cha Suradvisham Vadaya Cha Suradvisham Apare Vasudevasya Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachito Pyaga Devakyam Yachito Pyaga Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Ajastvam Asya Shemaya Vadaya Chasura Visham Vadaya Chasura Visham Madhajis Apare Vasudevasya Now I will read the purport. Please listen. 
It is also said that Vasudev and Devaki, in their previous life, in their previous birth as Sutapa and Krishni, underwent a severe type of penance to get the Lord as their son. And as a result of such austerities, the Lord appeared as their son. It is already declared in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord appears for the welfare of all people of the world and to vanquish the Asuras or the materialistic atheists. Omajana Kumarandasya Jananjana Shalakaya Chatsur Unmiditanyena my Sri Guru Namaha Vancha Kalpa Tarudhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patita Nam Pavan Hityo Vaishna Hityo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Do we need translation? Are you doing translation? Prabhu's doing the back. What about the Matajis? Are the Matajis okay? Do you speak English? Everybody's okay? Yeah? No? If any ladies want translation, uh, what do you do? Hindi translation? Okay. Yeah? All right. Good. So we're hearing Queen Kunti offer her prayers to her nephew, Lord Sri Krishna. Queen Kunti is a wonderful example of a great devotee and she is praying to the Lord because the Lord has helped them in so many difficult situations. Actually, Lord Krishna was preparing to leave for Dwarka and just as he was preparing to leave for Dwarka, then another incident happened. Ashvatthama threw the Brahmastra weapon against Uttara and Uttara was carrying the only descendant of the Pandavas. She was carrying the child Abhimanu in her womb and Ashvatthama wanted to kill that child and he threw the Brahmastra weapon hoping he could burn the child. But the mother Came to, came to Lord Krishna and prayed for the Lord to protect She, Mother Uttara asked that let my body be burned to ashes but please don't let anything happen to the child in my home. And so Lord Krishna again performed another of his miracles and he protected the child and naturally Kunti was very much appreciative and very much grateful to Lord Krishna for all of the protection which he had given to her five sons and now he had protected also the descendant of the Pandavas, the child of Abhimanu who would become Parikshit and he would go on to become the Emperor Parikshit. Mahariksit Maharaj who rule the world. So Queen Kunti is offering her prayers to Lord Krishna and it's a difficult situation because while she's offering prayers, she's also conscious that she's the aunt of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna likes to give respect to his aunt. You know, the nephew comes before the aunt and he will offer respect to her. 
Lord Krishna comes, he wants to take the dust from the feet of his aunt. But Queen Kunti understands that Lord Krishna is not just simply her nephew, but he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And she's revealing that in her prayers, just as we read the prayer here this evening, that Lord Krishna took birth as the child of Vasudev and Devaki. And Vasudev and Devaki, they had, in their previous lives, they had performed austerities. The Srimad Bhagavatam describes the Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Vasudev and Devaki, in their previous life, they were Krishni and Sutapa, long before Vasudev and Devaki, in the, another age, they were Krishni and Sutapa, and they performed great austerities for the purpose of getting the Lord as their child for three births. So the first birth was as they were, when they were Krishna and Sutapa. At that time, the Lord came as Krishna Gandha. And then the second birth, Krishna and Sutapa became Aditi and Kashyapa. And at that time, the Lord came as their son, as Lord Pamanati. And then they took birth again as Vasudev and Devaki. And as Vasudev and Devaki, they were prisoners in the prison house of Kamsa. And Kamsa was the brother of Devaki. But at the time of Devaki's marriage, there, been, there was an omen that the eighth child of this sister of yours is going to kill you. So Kamsa, when he heard this, he immediately grabbed his sister and he was going to kill her. But Vasudev was a very expert politician and he was able to speak nice words. Vasudev was a Kshatriya, but he was not a Maharati. He was not a great fighter, but he was a good politician and he could speak very nicely, and he was able to pacify Kamsa. And he told Kamsa that it will be very bad for you that if you kill this girl, because she's your sister, and today's her marriage. So if people hear that you murdered your sister on the day of her marriage, then what will they think? They will, it will give you a very bad, reputation. So that was one way in which Vasudev appealed to Kamsa. And then he also promised Kamsa, he said, that I promise that just now we're just married. We don't have any children. We don't know if we will have children in the future. But I promise you that if Devaki has a child, I will deliver the child to you. So Kamsa thought about this because he respected Vasudev. He respected his integrity. He knew that if he's talking like this, he will keep his word. Although it's a very difficult thing to do, now definitely, if your wife is going to deliver a baby, you know, the father will be very happy to have the baby. He won't want to give the baby to somebody like Kamsa, who's going to kill the child. But Vasudev, because of the situation, he had to speak like that. 
He had to promise cancer that I promise you I will give you the children. And so it happened. Vasudev put his sister and her husband in the prison in Mathura. And she gave birth one child after another. And Vasudev kept his word and he brought the children to Kamsa and Kamsa killed them cruelly. The first six children were all killed by Kamsa. The seventh child was Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram appears before Lord Krishna. He's the elder brother, right? If you go to Vrindavan, there's a temple there called Dauji. Dauji means a big brother. Right? They say Dauji Kapai Krishna Kanaya. Krishna Kanaya. Krishna is the younger brother. Dauji is the big brother. Balaram. So Lord Balaram appeared as the seventh child in the womb of Devaki. But it was arranged that Devaki, that the child in the womb of Devaki, by the power of Yoga Maya, would be moved to, to the womb of Rohini. Rohini was another wife of Vasudev. Vasudev had several wives. So, from the womb of Devaki, Balaram was transferred to the womb of Rohini. Devaki was in the prison house of Kamsa. But Rohini, she was, Vasudev had already sent her to the home of Nanda Maharaj in Goku. So Rohini was staying there for her protection. Vasudev didn't want anything to happen to his other wives. Devaki and him, they were put in the prison by Kamsa. But Kamsa did not worry about any of the other wives of Vasudev. So Rohini, she was over in Gokul, in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And the child was transferred to her womb. And she gave birth to Lord Balara. So we call Mother Rohini, Mother Rohini that has been very fortunate that she could give birth to Lord Balara. Lord Balara is called Rohini Nanda, one who gives pleasure to Mother Rohini. So Lord Balara, we will celebrate Balara Purnima very soon. Before Krishna Janmashtami, we have Balaram Purnima. And there will be a festival. We celebrate the appearance of Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram appeared in Gokul. In the, from, the womb of the, from the womb of Rohini, he appeared there in Gokula, in Vrindavan, one of the forests of Vrindavan. And then everyone thought, oh, Devaki has had a miscarriage because the child was transferred. Nobody knew, of course, what had happened to the child. They thought, oh, she's had a miscarriage. Sometimes it happens. You know, the woman thinks she's pregnant and then suddenly the child may just die untimely while still within the womb. So, miscarriage. So people thought, oh, Devaki has had a miscarriage. But then she became pregnant again for the eighth child. The eighth child, of course, is Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna comes as the eighth child in the womb of Devaki. And he appeared there in the prison house of Kamsa. So, it's very surprising to common people that Lord comes and he takes birth. Because one of the names of 
Lord Krishna is Aja, and Aja means the unborn, one who doesn't take birth. I was one day, I'm not in, I wasn't here, but I was in Europe and I was distrib I was doing Sankirtan and I was trying to distribute books to people and I offered a book to this one young man and the young man said to me, he said, I know Krishna cannot be God, he has a mother and father. God doesn't have a mother and father. He said like this to me. And then he told me, God is light. Where does the light come from then? If God is light, where is the light coming from? That he does not know. No answer. See, we have to explain to people, light comes from Krishna. Krishna is the source of all light. The Brahma Jyoti, the light of the sun, the light of the moon, they are all coming from the Brahma Jyoti. And that Brahma Jyoti is coming from the body of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Madha Sarvam Everything comes from me. Everything, material and spiritual. It's all coming from Lord Krishna. And light also comes from Lord Krishna. Light is an energy. Lord Krishna is the source of all energies. He is the energetic. He is the origin of all energies. So Lord Krishna appeared in the womb of Devaki as a child of Devaki. This was to keep the promise because Vasudeva and Devaki, they were previously Krishna and Sutapa and they did tapasya to get the Lord as their child for three births. But all they asked was, we want to have the Lord as our child. So the Lord took birth, but then immediately after his birth, of course, the Lord appeared in the, in the forearm form. He did not appear as a little baby. You know, your wife gave birth to a child to be a little baby. But the Lord appears from the womb of Devaki. He appeared in his spiritual form, forearm, fully decorated, fully grown with a turban and necklace and jewels and garlands, everything, all ornaments. Why? Because the Lord wants to convince Vasudeva and Devaki that he is the Lord. If he came like a little baby, they wouldn't know if he's the Lord or not. They'd be thinking, oh, is this God? Is this the Lord? So to convince them that he was actually the Supreme Lord, he came in the form of Nara, his four-armed Vishnu form. It's called Nara. But then at the request of Vasudev, Vasudev and Devaki, they thought, oh, if everyone knows we give birth to a child like this, it will be very embarrassing because he's got four arms. You know, if you have a baby with four arms, what do you think? You think, oh my goodness, you should only have two arms. So anyway, at the request of Vasudev and Devaki, the Lord then took the form of a baby. And it was arranged that Vasudev could get out of the prison with the baby and go across the Yamuna and go to Goku to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And there, Mother Yashoda had also given birth. So Vasudev exchanged the boy for the little girl which Mother Yashoda had delivered. And Vasudev brought the little girl back to Mathura and he left 
the boy Krishna there in the form of Nanda and Yashur. So Lord Krishna wanted to be in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is his home. He enjoys to be there in Vrindavan with all the cows. He enjoys playing there. You know, children who grow up in a city, not very nice for them. There's not much, it's not so natural, it's not so enjoyable. Where can they go? What can they do here in this big, in a big city? You know, when the holidays come. So it, it's not surprising many people have gone back to India. They don't want to be here when the children have holidays because it's difficult to keep them occupied, to keep them things to do. Of course you can do it, but it costs you money. You have to spend a lot of money. Teachers get them, get them to go less, this lesson, that lesson, go here, go there. It's all paying money. But if, if you live in the countryside, it's not, you don't pay. It's all there. Nature is there for everyone to enjoy. And the children who grow up in the countryside, they can go in the forest, just like Lord Krishna appeared in his, in his childhood. He passed his childhood Leela in Vrindavan, and he was able to enjoy the countryside every day, taking the cows with him into the forest of Vrindavan. And of course, Kamsa would send different demons because Kamsa was worried that this eighth ch this child was going to kill me, maybe he's been born. Actually what happened, when Devaki had delivered the child, the next morning Kamsa immediately came. Where is that child? Where is this eighth child? And Kamsa said, no, this is not a boy, this is a girl. But Kamsa still took the child. And he wanted to throw the child on the ground, but the child rose up in the air and revealed the divine form of Durga. And Kamsa was shocked. Oh, he understood something very powerful was happening. And he became very apologetic and, you know, he was not feeling so confident anymore. So anyway, this is, this is what happened. Uh, Kamsa saw that little, the, a baby girl had been born. But then other people told him the child has taken birth some other place. So Kamsa was sending his different friends, his asuras, the demons. He was sending them to kill all the children born in Brajapur. Just imagine, what a mentality. There are two kinds of people. In the Bhagavad Gita, we learn there is the Daivi Sampad and Asuri Sampad. There is the divine nature and there is the demoniac nature. So Kamsa, he was the demoniac type of person. Vasudev and Devaki, they were the divine. They had the godly quality. They were devotees. Those who are devotees of the Lord, they will have good qualities. Just like devotees, we will be clean. We will be non-violent. We don't like to kill. Arjuna was very hesitant to take part in the battle of Kurukshetra because he was a devotee. But he had to do it because Lord Krishna wanted him to do it. He wanted that all of these other people, all these demons, they all had to die because he had done so many bad things. So Lord Krishna told Arjuna that if you don't kill them, they're going to die anyway. They're already put to death by my plan. And Lord Krishna then showed Arjuna his Kala Rupa, 
this form of time. And in that Kala room, Arjuna could see so many people all dying. Bhishma and Drona and Karna and Duryodhana and one after another, they were all entering into the mouths of the universal form. They were all being annihilated. Lord Krishna was convincing Arjuna that if you don't fight, they're still going to die because they have been very sinful. They had tried to take away the chastity of Draupadi, the very saintly lady devotee. They tried to disrobe her and for that they had to die. And Lord Krishna was arranging it. And Arjuna, he wanted Arjuna to be an instrument. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Nimitta Matra Bhava Savyasachi. Arjuna is Savyasachi, he is very expert in firing arrows. And Lord Krishna wants him to use his skill as an archer to fight in this battle. So Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna, just become an instrument in my self. This is our position also. We want to all be instruments in the service of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is actually the doer. He's the real doer. We are just the instrument in his service. And we just pray that we can be a, a good instrument in his service. So Queen Kunti is praying like this. She's remembering Lord Krishna's birth and how Vasudeva and Devaki had given birth to the child. But actually he's unborn. It appears that he took birth. Common people think, oh, Krishna took birth. He has a mother and father. But those who are devotees, we know more. We know that Lord Krishna didn't just take birth like we take birth, but he appears just like when the sun rises in the morning. When the sun rises, it's not a new sun. It's the same sun, but it's appearing in our vision. So similarly, when Lord Krishna appears in this world, he's, a, he's appearing. Previously, he was hidden, but with his birth, he is appearing. He's coming, and his mission in coming, his purpose in coming is Paritranaya Sadhana Vinas Chaya Chaduskritam Dharma Samstapanartaya Sambhavami It's Lord Krishna's purpose to re-establish Dharma. He has to re-establish the religious principles. And he's doing that by, by speaking the Bhagavad Gita. This, in this way, he is establishing the religious principles for all of us. He is not just only speaking to Arjuna, but he is speaking for all of us. In the whole of the Kali Yuga, he has come to re-establish the religious principles. And he comes to kill the demons, the different demons like Kamsa. Kamsa, he was such a demon. Very powerful. Everyone was afraid of him. Lord Krishna, however, had to kill him. He was he had to be killed by Krishna. And when Krishna kills people, then they get mercy. That is the blessing of Krishna. Because when they when Krishna will kill them, at that time they're seeing Krishna in front of them. So they become purified at the time of death because they're seeing Krishna in front of them. 
So all of their sins are destroyed. And when Krishna kills them, then they're liberated. And even Kamsa was liberated. He went to the Brahma Jyoti. He got Sayuja Mukti. And all of the different demons who Krishna killed, they got different kinds of liberation. Putana, the witch who came and picked up baby Krishna, she wanted to kill Krishna. She put poison on her breast and she wanted to feed her breast to Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna took her breast and he bit out her light ear. And when he bit out her light ear, then she, she screamed and she assumed her real form. She had come as a gopi. She dressed like a gopi. Everyone thought she's another, oh, she's a very beautiful gopi. And so they let her come in and they let her pick up the baby Krishna. But when Krishna bit her breast, she screamed and she ran outside and she assumed her real form as a rakshasi, eight miles long, so huge body. And she fell to the ground screaming. Lord Krishna killed her, but he took her to the spiritual world to become his nurse in Goloka. She got liberation to Goloka to become one of the nurses who take care of baby Krishna. That is Krishna's mercy. The Krishna is killing the demons to take them to the spiritual world. Just like the wrestlers, Lord Kamsa, Kamsa arranged a wrestling match for Lord Krishna in Mathura. And there were wrestlers like Chanura and Mustika. And they were huge, they were very strong. Their bodies were like mountains and solid as rock. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were little boys coming from the village. They'd been taking care of the cows and their bodies were soft. But they had to fight. Kamsa arranged the fight. They said, we know you're good at wrestling. We know every day you're wrestling in the forest of Vrindavan. We want you to fight with us. So Krishna and Bhavarama fought with these demons and they killed them and they liberated them also. They also got liberation. Later on, when Lord Krishna was living in Dwarka, there was one demon called Pondraka. And this Pondraka, was, he wanted to be God. So he actually stuck on two arms. He had two, two kind of artificial arms made. And he stuck them on like he had four arms. And he came to Dwarka. And when everyone saw him, they were just laughing at him. Because it looked so funny, you know, he stuck these artificial arms on. And he, but he was so bold, he told Krishna that I am Bhagwan, I am Vishnu. That Sudarsan chakra belongs to me. You should give it to me. So Lord Krishna did. He gave it to him right across his neck, right? Cut off in his hand. He threw the Sudarsan chakra and beheaded him. But when he was beheaded, his soul went to the spiritual world and he got a four-arm form. He got Sarupya Mukti because he was always thinking that he was Vishnu and he was always imagining he had four arms. So Lord Krishna, when he killed him, he liberated him to Vaikuntha, to get a body like Lord Vishnu. That is Lord Krishna's kindness. He's very kind to everyone. But he's especially kind to his devotees, Vasudev and Devaki. 
And Kunti is also very kind to Kunti. Now Vasudev and Devaki, they had children, six children, all murdered by Kansa. Why didn't Krishna save them? Lord Krishna could have saved them, but there was another reason. It's a bit complicated. But these six sons, actually, they were demigods who had been cursed that they would come in the womb of Devaki and be killed by Kamsa. So Lord Krishna arranged that that curse was fulfilled. And then later on, after they'd been killed, Lord Krishna killed Kamsa and he freed his mother, Vasudev and Devaki. Then Devaki prayed to Lord Krishna. She said, you know, you have six brothers, your older brothers. They were all killed. Can you bring them back to me? Because Devaki had heard that Lord Krishna had gone to Sandipani Muni's ashram. Vasudev and Devaki, they sent Krishna and Balaram to Avanti. Avanti is called Ujjain today. If you go to Ujjain, that's Avanti for But it used to be called Avanti. And the ashram of Sandipani Muni is there. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram had gone there. And they'd learned from Sandipani Muni. Actually, they didn't need to learn, they know everything. But just to show the importance of having a guru, they went there. And also to please their parents, because Vasudev and Devaki thought, we want our son to get education. So they sent Krishna and Balaram there. And they stayed there 64 days. And in 64 days, they learned all the 64 arts. Every day they learned one of the different arts. So after they learned everything, then Sandipani Muni told them, I want some Guru Dakshi. And, they said, and he said, I want you to bring back my dead son. That previously my son died. I want you to bring him back to life. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram said, okay, no problem, we will do it. And they went and they found them, they went to Yamaloka and they brought them back. And so Devaki had heard that I heard you brought your guru's son back from death. He said, I want you to bring back my six sons who were all killed by Kamsa. So Lord Krishna had to go find the six sons again, Yamalo, bring them back and bring them to Devaki. And Devaki is so happy, her six sons have come and she feeds her breast milk to each of them. So each of the six sons, they got to drink the milk of Devaki. That was Prasada because Lord Krishna had already drank the milk from Devaki's breast at the time of his birth. He had drank some milk from Devaki's bread. So the breast milk of Devaki was Prasada. So when he brought the six sons, they also drank the milk from Devaki. They drank the Prasada of Lord Krishna and they all went to heaven. They went back to the heavenly planets. So in this way, Lord Krishna is fulfilling his mission. His mission to give pleasure to the devotees and to annihilate the miscreants, right? To give pleasure to the devotees. Devotees are all liberated souls. They don't need to be liberated. They're already liberated because they're doing devotional service, right? You're all chanting Hare Krishna. You're all hearing about Krishna. You're already liberated soul. So you don't need liberation. But what you need is association with Krishna. And Krishna comes to give that pleasure to his devotees. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Vasudev, Devaki, 
all of the cowherd boys, the cowherd girls, they are all enjoying in the association of Lord Krishna. So, Queen Kunti was appreciating how wonderful Lord Krishna is. Kunti, her sons never died. She had five sons, but Krishna always arranged to protect them. Because Kunti had no husband. Her husband had already died. Devaki had her husband. So Lord Krishna thought, she has her husband so her sons can die. But Kunti, she has no husband, so I will protect her sons. So this way Lord Krishna was very kind to Queen Kunti. Okay, any questions? Anyone? Yes, Prabhu? You got a microphone? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for narrating the birth of the sequence of Lord Krishna. My question Maharaj, why the eighth child was born as Mahamaya? So the, is there any symbolic uh, significance for uh, taking birth as Mahamaya? Eighth child. Huh? Eighth child of uh, Devi was born as Mahamaya and it disappears. Like Durga, she, she appears as Durga, is there any symbolic uh, importance on that Maharaj? Well, that is, that was the Leela. She is Krishna's sister. Right? She comes as Krishna's sister. So, Kamsa took her over there to Mathura and then she revealed the divine form. And then she went up to the mountain, to the, to, there is some hilly region where she resides here and she's worshipped. comes in Lord Krishna's sister, which is the energy of Krishna. So she came for that purpose only. Thank you, Lord. Yes? Any details, 
We're not told anything. I've never seen it anywhere. You know, we know about Lord Ramanate, the son of Krishna Naditi, but I haven't seen any real information about Krishna uh, Yarka. But I think that was a foreign Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> 